Hi, I've been wanting to make this video for a while now since uh, One Mon 22 and uh, Dago Cleo went and uh, made videos about uh, Glen Morangy. Um, my particular bottle of Glen Morangy is uh, is uh, is getting down there. It's uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying this a lot, <laughs> but um, I decided to uh, do some research into more uh, esoteric beverages and have uh, found uh, some videos on scotch and uh, most people who are familiar with the uh, single malts like Glen Morangy would also be quite uh, everyone's heard or most anyone who drinks scotch and especially single malts would know about Glenfiddich which is the largest selling scotch in the uh, single malt scotch in the world and Glen Morangy is the largest selling scotch in Scotland uh, of single malts, no, but uh, on the subject of Glenlivet and Glenfiddich, uh, Glenlivet I prefer over Glenfiddich. But there is one another. There's another one from the same area. It's called Glenfarkless. Uh, this is the uh, some kind of uh, West Coast special edition, which is strange because West Coast of Canada. Why would there be a, a scotch for the west coast of Canada? But it was a couple dollars less than the other Glen Farkless. And yeah, there we go. And so I'm going to uh, give this one a try. Having never tried it before, but having heard about it. And yeah, I need my glasses so I can see how to open this thing. We have a, we have a bunny event over there? Yeah. Ah, goody. They're trying parsley for the first time. Parsley? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yes. This peels off just like it normally would. Get this little cap off, and it's got a nice little wooden top for the cork. Throw this trash away. Let's give this one a little pop, shall we? Ah! Hmm. Smells like scotch. That's a good sign. And we will give it a little pour. Love that glug 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 sound. Well, uh, oh, first, before I taste this, I should cleanse the palate with some um, ice water. There, my palate is clean. That's a matter of opinion. This is very, very smooth, very nice. It's um, tastes a little more oaky than um, than uh, Glenlivet. Mm. It's got a nice aftertaste too. I like this. I'll be getting it again. This is more special than Glenlivet or Glenfiddich any day. How much is it a bottle? How much is this? I think I paid for a 12 year old, I think I paid $60, something like that. Okay. Or was it 50? No, 60. It was in the 60s, 65 or 63, something like that. Okay. Canadian dollars, that is. This is nice. This is going on my. Uh, Best of? It, it's, it's up there. It's up there. It's very, very nice. Oh, okay. Well, I might as well cleanse my palate and. Go for the next one we got going here. This one is mm -hmm. Bomor. Bomor is from the island of Isla. It is, uh, and and uh, scotches from that island have a pr particular salty overtone or undertone or whatever you want to call it. They taste totally different from the Highland malts, like like. Uh, this space side one, the uh, Glen Farkless that I just tried. I have had Bowmore before, although never an entire bottle. And there we go. I have never had an entire bottle, but I have tried it before. And when I tried it back in the day, about 20 years ago, there was a party in Los Angeles, and one guy from Colorado, who also brewed his own beer, brought a bottle of this along. 
and I brought a bottle of Canadian whiskey. And this stuff far surpassed the Canadian whiskey. It far surpassed almost anything I'd ever tasted before. That was my first introduction to an Isla malt. And since then, I've been into things like Ardbeg and um, one of my favorites, Lafroig, which Cindy claims tastes like... Smells like burnt tires. Smells like burnt tires on my breath. Did I clean the palate yet? Yes, okay. you did. I did. Okay. Well, let's go. do it again. Mm. So we'll give this one a little go. Woo! That came out nice and easy. Yeah, okay. More of a red color with that one, eh? A little more? A little more, yeah. Let's see now. Let's put this aside for a moment, shall we? And be careful not to spill it because it, it's not cheap. Mmm! Oh, you definitely taste the tang of the salt air immediately. This is very fine. It's smoky, it's peaty, but not overpoweringly so. It's it's just mmm. Mmm. A totally different character from the Speyside malt. <coughs> oh yes. This is every bit as good as Lafroig, maybe better. Oh man. I remember this being really fine. Ha <laughs> but this fine. Oh my god. Goodness, this stuff is sensationally wonderful. So, I, and what is that worth a bottle? I forget what I paid. It's been a few weeks. This has been sitting on my mantelpiece for a while. Um, what did I pay? I don't know. 80? Something like that. 80, 90 bucks a bottle. Yeah. Oh, man, that's good. Now, I have another couple things in my arsenal. Because it wouldn't be fair to taste the finest of the fine without, well, some slightly different things. When I was watching that video on scotch, they were showing the scotches of the Isle of Isla. And um, they were showing things like Ardbeg, and they were showing the Bowmore, and they were showing Brookladdy. And... Only 17 miles away from the distillery, there, there goes a the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Only 17 miles away from the distillery where they, oh, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted. <laughs> Not only by the scotch. Um, there's a distillery only 17 miles away from the Bowmore distillery, but it's on the other side of the border for Ireland. So it's actually an Irish whiskey, but it's only made 17 miles away from the Bowmore, or was it the Brookladdy? One of those two, anyway. It wasn't that far away. Mm. And uh, but the, the the man who started the distillery was a Scot. So I will try some of that too. This is the Bushmills single malt. It's not just plain ordinary Bushmills, which is the Irish whiskey, but this is a Bushmills single malt. So this is the um, we're going to give this a, a shot as well, or a try. Just that one doesn't come in a box. Oh. <laughs> no, it doesn't come Bella's in a box. Bella's licking your bottles you put down on the floor. <laughs> oh, Bella, you have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> Bella, Bella, la, 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 la. Oh, oh. Tink. Ooh. Tink has Ooh. a taste too. I think they might be getting developing a, a taste for that stuff. Only the they finest. the beer. Only, yeah, they haven't had any in a while, have they? Only the finest for our rabbits. What's more of this? Okay. So, this is the first time I've seen Bushmills with a cork. Now, that one didn't come in a box? No. Bushmills did not come in a box, but... So, they're the cheaper ones? No. This one is about $52 a bottle. Holy crap, you drink the best, don't you? Well, I'm trying this one. for the... I've had Bushmills before, but never a Bushmills single malt. And to be appropriate, we're drinking it in a Swiss glass. Thanks, Bernie. Thanks, Bernie. Did I? I must have cleansed my palate already for that, right? Mm, yeah, I did. I think I did. Well, we'll give that a shot, too. You like this, don't you?
Hmm. It tastes more like Irish whiskey than the scotch does. <laughs> it has that, that oaty, oat, that, that, that flavor of oats in there. I can't put the thing on that. Uh, it's triple distilled. Ah, okay. And it's uh, it's in a copper pot still. Matured in bourbon and Oloroso sherry casks for a minimum of 10 years. Bur that's, that's what tastes different, too. It's the bourbon cask rather than just the oak cask. Hmm. A bit of bourbon and sherry. It's it's lighter tasting than the than the uh, the Isla malt than the Beaumont. Um, you know it's pretty good. I'm not sure I would buy it again at that price, but it's not too bad. Now, <laughs> I was just at the local liquor store a couple weeks ago, or was it last week? I'm going to get my beer. And they had a display at the front of the liquor store. You go right in, and there was this bottle of... It looked a little bit like Johnny Walker Red Label. But Johnny Walker Red Label cost about $28, $29. This one here is called John Barr. <laughs> it's a blended scotch. Uh, it was $22 a bottle. <laughs> so this could be really raunchy. <laughs> We're going to give it a try, and we're going to have it in, in a Dirty Dick's last resort shot glass. <laughs> the big-ass shot glass. And and this one doesn't have a cork. It, it, it screws open, so you can tell we've gone down about a notch or two in terms of... Uh, you started at the top of the scale and worked your way down. I'd have gone the other way. No, I think I moved up a little bit. I I started at Glen Farkless, which was pretty high up there, but Bowmore was much better. Oh. Yeah. This one here is John Barr Blended Scotch Whiskey. Soft, mellow, and smooth, it says. John Barr Finest. I'm guessing it's going to be the worst out of the four. It would really surprise me if it's the best. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, this stuff was made... It, the, the explanation at the liquor store is that this stuff was made as a response to a shortage of Red Label because there was some kind of boycott of Johnny Walker or something going on in Britain. And the, this guy, these people who came up with this, uh, made it as a surplus, as a, well, so that you could get some <laughs> as, a, as a substitute for the Red Label. And it's cheap too, so here we go. Hmm. You know, where it says soft, mellow, and smooth, they're not wrong. For a cheap whiskey, this is nice. Good. 22 bucks a bottle. Well, <laughs> now that I've got um, all of these going, I think I'm going to get good and drunk. <laughs> take your time. I will, no rush. I will take my time. <laughs> well, that's it. Um, yeah, my impressions of the four. Uh, I think I like the Irish the least. Oh. Yeah. Till next time. Fat quick. Fat quick. Fat quick. Fat quick. Fat, fat wick. Fat quick. <laughs>